The Sydney Property Market Recovery. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Still working through my morning stein of coffee, and I thought we'd have a look at this article from realestate.com.au discussing the recovery, or the green shoots, emerging in the Sydney property market. This is kind of the companion piece, I think, to the Melbourne property rebound to boost the economy that we are looking at. Is this just FOMO for the Sydney market, or is it looking to return? We'll have to see everyone. I think we're going to see more and more of these pieces jumping on to any piece of news that they can to push a positive outcome because we really are property obsessed here in Australia. So green shoots and early early signs of recovery in the housing market, but risks remain. Well, of course, risks remain. I mean, none of the banks haven't stopped their, their holidays. We're, we're getting more and more investors you know, being told that they can go interest only for a year longer. Rents are crumbling. International tourism is non-existent. International student numbers. The last you know intake was 30 people. Airbnbs are flooding the rental market. Rental prices are dropping. And this is all while our cash rate is close to zero. So, yeah. I would say risks do remain. Certainly... I, I'd certainly agree with that. What, what do you think, guys? Am, am I being over, overly dramatic there and thinking that there's still are elements of risk? So, green shoots are beginning to emerge in parts of Sydney's property market, suggesting doomsday predictions of a household crash may have jumped the gun. So, we're seeing this again: same use of terms and same use of language. You know, it's it's a persuasion technique. So the authors are doing you know, this. Is written by Aiden. And this is written by Jitira in the Herald. Same thing. Doomsday. Doomsday. Okay. That's to paint a negative view of the people who are making these, well, doomsday predictions. Like the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, everyone. The Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Real estate experts. Okay. They're experts, guys. Do you believe experts in real estate? said the same patterns that predicted prior house housing market recoveries have been reoccurring over recent weeks. Okay. Okay. But the cause of this, this uh, impending, we haven't even hit the recession yet, guys. People haven't tried to get back to work and realize their jobs no longer exist. All the government support hasn't disappeared. Job keepers still in place. This includes a rise. Oh, wait, wait a minute. This includes a rise in auction clearance rates. Our good friend auction clearance rates. And if what I'll do is, guys, I'll just bring up. I'll bring up my website here. And at the top here, I've got an article where I've written looking at the fake auction clearance rates exposed. And this is thanks to data received, data mined by the team at Fresh Canvas, where I just go through and demonstrate the fact that there's always a positive bias in auction clearance rates. It's not actually accurate. They don't go and update it. They don't update it. Often the agents won't report it. So have a look at this. You can download the data and you can see it all for yourself, guys. So I don't really trust auction clearance rates. But here we see it again. It's all about creating a narrative. It's creating a narrative. It's persuading you. It's going to be okay. Don't trust those doomsday people. They're like cult members. You know, they're bad. Don't trust them. That's why we use that word there. Trust our experts. Experts, good. Experts, good. Property, good. Buy, buy, buy. Now, good little pleb. Increased sales in the premium end of the market and higher rate of sales inquiry. Okay, so the premium end. Well, here's, here's a dose of reality for everyone. We're all on the left. We're not all equal. Property isn't all equal. You know, the premium end, there'll always be a different demand for it than all of us plebs out in the dodgy suburbs. This is just showing you price growth here in units. Look at some of those dark red ones there, guys. Those are stellar investments. And high rate of sales inquiries. It's Again, it's the search results. Search results. 
The early signs of recovery pointed to a buffer for prices that would insulate the market from a collapse, although a return to pre-pandemic condition, conditions could take years. It comes as economists savage recent predictions of a more than 30% crash in value as unrealistic and failing to account for a major drop in listings, which has limited buyers' bargaining power. Yes, but that 30% crash isn't predicted for right now. It is predicted for a two-year period. 2021, 22. So how can you laugh at that now? I know economists are fantastic at... Uh, oh, my wage growth chart isn't coming up. I know economists are fantastic at predicting the future. But yes. Real estate... Institute of Australia President Adrian Kelly said forecasts of a crash were fanciful. We have a situation where listings are decreasing, yet inquiry levels from prospective buyers are increasing. I do not believe at this point it's to a catastrophic outlook for housing prices, he said. Yes, because people are locked at home. People are in quarantine. We're under house arrest. So, of course, more people are going to be locking around. And you've got a whole lot of people that are seeing this as their only opportunity to get into a market because they've all been trained to believe the property will always go up, will always go up, will always go up. That's our culture. You can't compare this to previous conditions because there are all these other circumstances that never existed before. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, you know, I mean, Adrian has built his whole life on real estate. Realestate.com.au chief economist, Nerida Knizby said a continued market recovery will be long and slow and will not be felt equally across the city. Yes, she's right. She is right, 100%. Here's the thing. People will talk about, you know, Sydney's gone up such and such a percent, so my property's gone up when it's a, you know, stock standard spec home out in the suburbs. It's got to be special, guys. And a lot of us aren't special. You know, I know, I know we've got everyone being told that they're special and, you know, it's the inside that counts. There's some realities that... Uh, that some people may need to experience. This was repeating a pattern from prior recovery phases where conditions improved in key estate markets before spreading west, or key eastern markets before spreading west, resulting in price falls in some areas and rises in others. Western Sydney areas still have a lot of housing supply, so will take longer to pick up, Ms. Knizby said. And also we have to remember the migration rate to Sydney is decreasing. Sydney's population growth is going down. Melbourne's poised to overtake them. Recent trends, including auction clearance rates of 66% over the past two weeks, are up from 40% in April, suggesting a wipeout in values across the entire market was unlikely. Buyer activity has been pushing up since April and search inquiry levels are recovering, she said. Atrocious unemployment figures will slow the recovery down, so things won't be going back to normal quickly, but a wholesale it's a collapse is not happening. Well, what would happen if all of the interventions into the market were removed, say, in six months' time? They probably won't do that, guys. We'll probably see in six months' time where they continue the job keeper. Maybe they need to give a landlord keeper. Maybe there'll be a landlord keeper, you know. Special bonds guaranteed to be paid by everyone in the future to keep the landlords in their properties, to keep the market propped up. We can't have people facing adversity, guys. The teacher who owns, you know, six investment properties and $1.1 million, he can't suffer. You know, he's just trying to get ahead, guys. Come on, you young people. Your children's children. Work. Work for your grandparents' retirement. Or am I getting too cynical, <laughs> guys? Am I getting too cynical? House hunters, Tania Tan and Robert Hosker, have been looking for a new home after listing their Neutral Bay house on Bend Street for sale, and so buyer competition was stronger than they expected. There aren't many properties for sale, and we've seen lots of people at open homes, Ms. Tan said. It seems the pandemic hasn't affected the income of a lot of people planning to buy. McGrath, Lower North Shore agent, Claudia Portale said upsizing families were the most active buyers in the market. Families are looking, hoping they can get better value, but there's cr that's creating competition for listings, she said. It's not the same competition as last year, so you don't need to pay a premium, but they're not getting bargains either. 
because people aren't being forced to it. Stress hasn't reached that point yet. Among recent predictions was a worst case scenario presented by the Commonwealth Bank when unemployment stayed close to 9% until 2022, causing home values to drop by a third over the next three years. The bank said an 11% fall was more likely. US financial commentator Harry Dent predicted a 20, 30 to 50% drop in values in Sydney and Melbourne. He made similar predictions, predictions in 2011 and 2014. Sydney's median home price has yet to fall since the country went into lockdown in late March, with prices inching up in March and April, according to CoreLogic. So we will have to see, guys. We will have to see where it all goes. Here's the thing. ComBank are talking about 2022. We've been in this for two months. Where do you think it'll head? Should you make your decision to not buy? Well, if rent's going down, you can afford it. Why jump? Or if you're looking for a home that's going to be your forever home and you don't care if you take a 20-30% hit, eh, jump in. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens, guys. You know, But you don't want to be stuck with a huge bloody mortgage when prices are falling, unemployment is just still looking terrible and you can't get a job. You don't want that stress. You know, What's worth more to you? Potentially making making a big in property or living stress free street stress free. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below, guys. Thanks for watching. Do you think this is just more FOMO to try and generate more enticement to get more people in the market? Or do you think it's the sign of a recovery? If you're a fan of the channel and you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. You can support us via Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or you can also support us via PayPal. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.